Nancy, atheists are not just attacking theist views. They have their own views. Yes. They talk about the pointlessness of the universe, the violence in the universe, the evil in the universe, the wastefulness in the universe, the imperfections in the universe. What does a Christian theist say to all that? Well, how would you know that the universe is pointless unless you had already decided that there is no God that gives it a point? So that's definitely a circular argument, and I think very easily dismissed. Well, it's, uh, it's an argument from the physical world, th that there's no apparent point to what I'm seeing with all this stuff in the physical world. But that's just assuming that this is not the uh, first stage in God's plan for a new heaven and a new earth, and a new earth specifically. And so it's a circular argument. Okay, well, what about some of the other things? Uh... Those are very serious arguments. Um, the imperfections, um, uh, the, the suffering, the evil. Um, of course, human evil, um, we can blame ourselves for that. And if you believe in free will, uh, as the atheists do in probably the same percentages as, <laughs> right. as the theists right. do, uh, you've pre perhaps even got uh, less reason to think that, uh, to expect people to treat one another well. And so human evil shouldn't be any better argument against the existence of God than, than um, uh, uh, for... Uh, um, I'll start over there. Uh, so human evil shouldn't be any stronger argument against God than, than for God. Um, the suffering and imperfection, those have been, I think, uh, rather intractable problems for theists, at least since the development of evolutionary biology. Um, for a long time, the standard Christian story was that suffering uh, of humans, undeserved suffering, or apparently undeserved suffering, and suffering of animals, uh, natural calamities like tsunamis, earthquakes, famines, etc., these could all be explained as either punishment for human sin or a, a causal a consequence of human sin because it disordered the chain of command from God to the angels to humans to the uh, organic and inorganic world. So the chain of command is broken and then the natural world is all disordered. Uh, but once that storyline of historic fall, disordering of the once previous cosmos, etc., has been destroyed, first of all, simply by historical criticism. We no longer believe that those books of the Bible are, are uh, historical narrative. But then in particular with the advent of evolutionary biology, where we know that the animals were suffering for eons before humans appeared on the scene to sin, uh, there hasn't been any really good explanation for all of that suffering. But um, the philosopher Leibniz um, in the 1800s uh, suggested that the more we know about the way uh, the universe is interconnected, the more we see that we can't change one bit of it without changing a whole lot of the rest of it. And as science has developed, particularly what we know about the so-called fine-tuning of the natural laws, uh, we can see that the universe, in terms of its basic physical structure, had to be almost exactly what it is like in order for us to be here. Well, let's look at the wastefulness of the universe, where we have all this intergalactic dust. We have millions of asteroids crashing into one another. Every time we look at a, another planet and get one of our spacecraft there, they're pockmarked with with, uh, with, uh, with the remnants of, uh, of collisions. And it seems like there is so much chaos in the universe uh, a a that uh, uh, we have all this uh, uh, abundance <clears throat> of what it seems to be absurd. Who says it's wasteful? I mean, that's a value <laughs> judgment. Maybe it's wonderful that it's all out there. There's a psalm that I quote, uh, a fragment of, and I probably won't get the words right, but when I look at the stars, the work of your hands, 
Uh, what is man that thou art mindful of him? You know, number the stars, number the grain of, grains of sand on the beach, and then think, wh who is man that thou art mindful of him in the midst of this universe that we now know is so much bigger than the psalmist could ever have imagined? Uh, it's glorious to have all of that out there. God must enjoy it, and as we are able to take photographs of it and enjoy it, uh, it's marvelous for us, too. It's a value judgment to say that it's waste. Now, another uh, really important argument that people keep raising is the wastefulness of the evolutionary process. But that also is a faulty argument. You can't have evolution without death. Where would there be room for all of us if, the, if all the dinosaurs were still alive? Uh, the evolutionary process requires the dying out of individuals, and it also uh, probably requires the dying out of some species so that they can be replaced by species with uh, um, uh, higher powers. It's not waste. Some would say that your whole argument is one of rationalization. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, it makes the point that you can't simply argue from a few uh, bits of observation uh, to uh, God exists or God doesn't exist. Uh, these are total worldviews. These are totally different ways of looking at the whole of reality. And you can't take someone from one of these worldviews and say, here, let me rub your nose in a few of these details, and poof, you're going to change that person's mind. Uh, I, as a theist, see the whole world differently, I'm sure, than the way the naturalists see it. And silly as this might sound, I sometimes look at a sequoia tree, and I think of it as reaching up to God. Naturalists can't see trees like that, and I can't make a naturalist see a tree as praying. Uh, but do, do you mean that as metaphor or as reality? Metaphor, but it's just an illustration of what a different world the theist lives in from the world that the naturalist lives in. And you can't just say, point at these few uh, different aspects, and presto, you're going to convince someone from the other worldview that, oh my gosh, I've been wrong about all of this, and I've got to change my mind. 